we shall be reading from verse 1 to 10. He said, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubs, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin, Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come and save us. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will thou be angry against the prayer of thy people? Thou feedest them with the bread, feedest them with the bread of tears, and giveth them tears to drink in great meal. Thou makest us, thou makest us a strive unto our neighbor, and an enemy's life laugh among themselves. Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the eating and planted it. Thou preparest room before it and didst cause it to take deep root and it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it and the bulls thereof were like the godly cedars. Praise the Lord. Join me again. And we're going to read from the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. We're going to read chapter 37. Genesis 37. And then we shall read verse 5. The Bible said, And Joseph dreamed a dream. Let's start from verse 1 to 8 also. This will give us a clear understanding of what I want to talk about today. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. Now these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was fed, feeding the flock with his brethren and the last was with the sons of Belial and with the sons of Ziphla, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. You will dream a dream. And he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said to them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Verse 9, the Bible says, And he dreamed yet another dream. And told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream. I say you will dream a big dream. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made up sense to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren and indeed in brethren indeed come? To bow down ourselves to thee, to the head, and his brethren having him, but his father observed the same. Precious Holy Spirit, please reveal the truth that changes life unto us in the name of Jesus. 
Glory be to God. In the next four days, this year will be coming to a close. At the beginning of the year, some of us have dreams. In fact, before 2023 began, many of us had dreams about what God will do in our life this year. Many of us, we did not have dreams, but we set goals of what we want to achieve in the year 2023. Many dreams have been achieved, while so much more dreams have not been achieved. See, brothers and sisters, this is the last Wednesday of the year 2023. You need to ask yourself some pertinent questions, very important questions. These dreams that I have, this goal that I said, what has happened to the dreams that I had? What has become of the goals that I set for myself? Many goals have not been achieved. Many dreams have not been fulfilled. But you see, at the end of every phase of your life, and so many things can mark different faces in our lives, when you are leaving primary school to a secondary school to your secondary school a phase of your life just finished you move to another phase of life when you finished your ssc or your high school and you moved to the university or any higher institution of learning what you have done is that you have moved from one phase of your life one chapter of your life to another phase. Hallelujah. When you graduated and you went for service, you shifted and moved from one phase of your life to another phase. When you stopped serving and you got a job, you shifted from the phase of an unemployed graduate to a, an employed graduate. Then when you change job, you change face again. From an underemployed person to a well employed person. Came fully employed person. You see, it did not stop there. When you decided to get married, it's a face. You were shifting face from your singlehood to a marriage, married person. Now I want you to pay attention today that every time a man is shifting or changing phase, there are dreams, there are goals, there are decisions you make ahead, if you are wise, of entering into your new phase. For example, when you wanted to shift being a single to getting married. You must have made up your mind that I will have a good marriage. You will have the marriage of your dream. Am I correct? When you are moving from primary school to secondary school, you will have had a dream that I want to be the best in my secondary school, in my class. It's a dream. And you know what? There is no sin in having dreams. And the truth is that man has been created by God to dream dreams. If dream is not relevant to our life, my brothers and sisters, God will not have allowed it. So you see, those dreams that you had, when the year started, they are right. It's good to have dreams. It's good to nurture your dreams. It's good to pursue your dreams. Wow. You may not understand how sweet it is to have your dreams become a fulfillment in your life until you enter into the fulfillment session of your dreams. 
Joseph, while he was a teenager, had several dreams. We were told two of those dreams. And all of those dreams were indicative of what his life would be in the future. The present future that you have is 2024. 2023 is gradually becoming an history in your life. Some dreams were never fulfilled. Although you tried your best possible to see them come to fulfillment. You worked very hard. You pursued some of them. You started that business. You changed job. You changed accommodation. But yet, you don't find fulfillment in those things. It looks as if your dreams are not being fulfilled. As this year closes or draws to an end, can I challenge you to dream again for 2024? Now, but I, I need to help us to understand something because I'm here to quickly, because it's the end of the year, and I know that we may have some questions. So, tonight uh, nobody's timing me but myself so i i think it's important that i give us chance to ask questions is somebody with me tonight all right so i'll give myself 30 minutes to round up from now praise god i think that's okay abby and i will surprise all of you Glory be to God. So, Joseph was a dreamer. Let me bring it back home. The Zion height is a dream that has been fulfilled and unfolded gradually right before us. Joseph had some dream and he fulfilled them. And I told you already that it is not wrong for you to dream. What dreams make us to become is to have a sense of responsibility. So when your dreams are therefore not fulfilled, what do you do? When you set goals, you set you went ahead and you did set some goals for yourself at the commencement of 2023 but you discover that those goals that you set for yourself those goals that you set for your family those goals that you set for your children are not being fulfilled friend what do you do when the time now begin to lapse for that phase because when you are changing from one year to another what you are doing is moving from one phase of your life to the other. Oh, may I tell you, by this time next year again, many of us will be a year older. Am I correct? You are not getting younger. Nobody will ask you. I hope you know, how young are you? The question will always be, how old are you? And you know when they ask you those questions, you know, the broad meaning of that question is simply what have you been doing with your life since you came to this world how old are you what have you achieved since you were born on earth how old are you how many souls have you impacted in this world since your parents gave birth to you how old are you because many of us just take this question of how old are you simply yeah, i'm 10 years old i'm 15 i'm 16 i'm 25 i'm 35 no they are just not they are not just asking for your years that you have covered because Methuselah covered 990 something years yet there is nothing that is attached to his name glory be to god can I ask you, what were those dreams that you had when the year started that you've not been able to achieve? The moment you are able to ask yourself that question, 
at the threshold of the end of this present year what it will do is that it will help you to prepare properly for next year you know the mistake many people would make they think this this is marrying this is the season, time to eat this is the time to enjoy this is the time no this is not the time for that this is the time to go into retrospect this is the time to sit down and scale your life this is the time to look at the goals you have set for yourself that you've not been able to achieve. This is the time for you to sit down and bring to remembrance those, what do they call it, that people write at the beginning of every year. Those resolutions. I won't lie again. I won't take that meat from my mother's pot again. Amen? That you were not able to stand by. You know the question you should be asking yourself now why was it why has, was it difficult for me to achieve my goals why was it hard for the dreams that i had for my life to be fulfilled now there's a guarantee i can give you tonight if you are able to answer those questions about two or three questions that i just mentioned i'm telling you it will help you to prepare better for 2024. Don't join people in just watching movies. It's holiday season, we know. Don't use every moment of your holiday to waste your time. Take advantage of it. When work resumes fully in January, you may not have opportunity of sitting down and thinking through your life like you have now. So it's not every time that you should have to watch movies it's not every time that you should have to know to be on the social media this is the time and the season for you to sit down and think your life and think your life deep. so you need to identify those goals you could not achieve in 2023 joseph was in the prison but he knew that time was going and what did joseph do child of god joseph told somebody the interpretation of his dream and then he said please when this dream is being fulfilled don't forget me don't forget me you know the meaning of that joseph understood that his liberation was with the people he would help interpret their dreams there are people you have not helped to interpret their dreams in 2023 and they are the one that own the ace to your breakthrough there are people that you see that oh this boy has potential but you don't know they are the ones that god has set in your life to help you fulfill your dreams so you trivialize the relationship you have with them you look down on them there are messages that god has sent to you through your pastor but when pastor is just talking you just feel this man just know how to talk he's just eloquent no until you sit down and think back and think deep and see where you have failed and then plan not to fail in those areas because many of us will still need to go and rewrite those goals that we could not achieve in 2023 rewrite them as goals again for 2024 do you believe me because i told you there are no unreasonable goals there are only unreasonable timelines there are no unreasonable goals is the time we set to achieve them in most cases that are unreasonable so identify those goals you could not achieve this year and then evaluate why you could not achieve them then you work on achieving them for example some of you last year you could not pray for more than 10 15 minutes and you made up your mind that i'm going to double my prayer time in 2023 but right now as we speak if you are sincere with yourself there was never a day 
that you spent up to 30 minutes before God, alone with God. And you know that this is the reality about your Christian race. There are many of us that you said, this year, I must hear God the way my pastor and other people are hearing God. But you discover that you were kumbad around. In other words, you were so much involved in activity like Mata that there was no time you created to hear God speak, though he is speaking. So you need to sit down again. Don't just set goals. Look at why goals that you did set this year have not been achieved. I'm not going to lie to you. There are many people that there will be no activity so much in their life until the end of the year again. I hope you know that. They will just wait for the remaining four days to pass away. Yet, there are people that activities will be falling upon activities. Miracles upon miracles. Why? There are some goals they did set at the beginning of the year. And the realization of those goals are just beginning to happen at the tail end of the year. Do you know why? Some of them have been so persevered they have been so tenacious they have held on to their faith and they have worked hard joining faith with their work now these are some of the reasons why some of our goals are not established i'll tell you one of them you work hard to achieve your faith to achieve your goal but you don't have faith to it you don't have faith to it is somebody being blessed tonight at all so evaluate why you could not achieve your present goals you know that moses in the book of i think genesis moses had a goal as he was growing up he knew that he was not an egyptian i hope you know because his mother called him his foster mother if you want to call it like that that's the daughter of pharaoh who brought him out of the water gave him that name Moses and what's the meaning of Moses drawn out of what water so that means his, his name would always make him to think why am I giving this name why am I being called Moses and it will always lead everyone back to who he was you are an Hebrew the princess drew you out of the water you are not an egyptian so it must have been reinforced in him that he wasn't one of the real original egyptian so he knew there was no way he would become a pharaoh in egypt i hope you understand and also he must have known that look i'm an i'm a jew i'm an hebrew boy and so one day he set out to begin to achieve the aim of delivering the people of Israel from the hand of the Egyptian. Was it a good dream? It was. It was a good dream. Moses set out to achieve the dream of delivering the children of Israel. But he failed when he tried to make attempt by himself. There are many things that things that you have tried to attempt this year and you have failed not because you did not work hard at them but you know what because you are so full of yourself in the process of trying to achieve them you you just think it is by your wisdom that you will achieve this thing you just think it is by the skill that you have at, obtained that you will accomplish these set goals and you keep forgetting that the Bible says it's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit. And what the spirit does is to enable you to accomplish what the flesh can ordinarily not have accomplish. Somebody say amen to this. Evaluate why you could not achieve your goals. Evaluate why your dreams remain dreams throughout 2023 identify those dreams that you had and were never fulfilled i pray that the grace and the biggest opportunity 
to get these dreams accomplished as we enter into 2024 god will give to you in jesus name so dream those dreams again you know we don't have the record of how many times joseph dreamed his dreams again do we have them but i'm sure he was always dreaming that was why he was not ready to sleep with the wife of potiphar he has seen himself on the throne in the palace because his boss was an official of the king so god must have revealed to him that one day even potiphar your master will bow to you dreams helps to keep you straight it was his dream and the fear of god he had that made him not to sleep with the wife of his master dreams if you know the power of dreams you will not live a dreamless life and i'm not talking about the dreams that you dream when you i'm talking about the dreams of your destiny and future the dreams that you dream of posterity even when you are no more alive dream those dreams again put your dreams before you like joseph reinforce the veracity of your dreams by sharing them one of the things that joseph kept on doing was sharing his dreams it is the dream you believe in that you possess confidence of sharing the other thing that you must do as this year 2023 closes is that you must identify the blessings of god in your life for the year 2023 and learn to give thanks to god for them identify that new job god gave to you the exam you were able to write some of you changed accommodation some of you gave birth to children some of you your child got the first year on earth some of you, you your, your child wasn't working but he's working now I once know of a, a young girl that was giving child that was giving birth to. She never walked. She never sat. She never talked. She never fed herself. After some few years, she passed on. Learn to give thanks to God for the blessings He has released into your life. Every time you wake up in the morning, you stretch yourself. Oh, you, you feel that it is your right. It's a privilege. It is a privilege, child of God. Until it settles in your mind that, that your eyes can see is a privilege. You know, I was reading of a young girl who got blind. I think she wrote the last job or something like that. She got blind while she was solving the mathematics question. She was solving maths and she got, she went blind. Your child is not blind. You are not taking your husband across the street because he can't see. Learn to give thanks to God. If you can think deep, you will be able to thank greatly. The depth of your thanks should be commensurate to the depth of your thought. The reason why many people are in, in, ungrateful is because they are not thankful. They don't think. I, I, I always say this. You may not be where you want to be at the end of this year. But you are not where you used to be. I hope you know that. You have shifted. Some things have moved in your life. Learn to give thanks to God. So take a thought of the blessings of God in your life for this year before you go into next year and give thanks to the Lord. And before identify those whom God has used for you in 2023 and learn to celebrate and appreciate them. You know, 
myself and my partner we did something for some of some people around us and we thought that the least that could happen is that a an sms of appreciation should have been sent out of about nine people only one and what to my remembrance story of jesus and the ten blind men or is it crippled people they were ten jesus healed ten of them he said go and show yourself to the priest as they were going they received their healing and only one who was not a jew who was not an hebrew came back to give thanks jesus said were they not ten that were healed where is the where are the nine are you among the nine or you are that one as the year is coming to an end there are people god have used for you definitely am i correct there are people that have been part of your uplifting this year because god will not come and carry you up he will use men amen have you learned to go back to appreciate them number five identify those god has positioned around you to lighten your body and show them love and thanks there are people friends colleagues at work neighbor in your compound people that you serve God together in your unit in the church yes there are some of your colleagues in the class where you go to school there are some of your siblings that God have used for you you must learn to identify them they are what I call burden lifters there are people God have used to lighten the burdens of your life People God have used to encourage you to move on in life. People God have used to solve some critical problem at critical situations in your life. Can you show them love to? Some of them may even be your employee. Doing what you cannot do. Facing the challenges you sit in the office or sit at home and they are facing it. See, it's not all the time that we need to always quote the scripture. There are some commonsensical things that we must learn to do. Learn to do them. And yet, they are scripturally based. They are biblically based. Learn to give thanks to people God have used to lighten your bodies this year. There may be time you had no money on you. God used somebody to give you transport God used somebody to buy food stop for you God used somebody to buy common snacks for you at office but you don't recognize it and the last one where I'm going to stop tonight identify those that didn't help you but had capacity to help you identify those that were bent on pulling you down as you try to climb the ladder of life identify those that stood strongly against you despite your good overtures towards them they kept standing against you they kept stopping you from making progress and they're in the bible Remember Sambalad and Tobias? Oh, Nehemiah led the children of Israel to rebuild the wall, the broken down wall of Jerusalem. But Sambalad and Tobias, they were making jest of them. What's the intention of them making, mocking them? What was it? To weaken their resolve to build. You know, some of us you have made up your mind what you want to become this year but because somebody 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 somewhere looked at you and said well, stop disturbing yourself are you the only one and this thing is not possible and some people actually gave up in the process 
of trying. I'm here to tell you that if you can make up your mind and try again, you will achieve your goal in the name of Jesus. So you need to identify those people that are not ready to give you the ladder to climb. And yet, the ladder that others provided for you to climb with, they want to pull down the ladder or pull you down the ladder. You know what you should do with those people as you go into the new year? Cut yourself off from them. Some of them have attached themselves so much to you that even you, you see them as being part of your life. Can I tell you, they are not actually part of your life. They are leeches. You don't need leeches around you. They are parasites. You can yank them off your life. They don't mean good for you or your husband or your wife or your children. And, and there are so many young people that don't know this. There are many people around us that they really don't mean good for us. But we keep on holding to them. Thinking if we don't have them as friends that we will not survive in life. I'm here to tell you it's a lie. You don't really need them. They need you. They know what they are drawing from you. Be, be careful of people that keep tapping from you and never returns unto you. They keep taking from, and pastor suffers this a lot. People tap the anointing, they tap the grace, they tap the blessing, but they don't return anything back. You know what you will do for those wicked ones that are around you? You know what I call them now in the church here? What do I call them? They are called what? Say frenemies. They appear as friends, but deep down, they are actually your enemies. They laugh with you in the day, talk about you, talk behind you, bad about you behind you. They chat with you on your WhatsApp, sending the smiling and laughing emoji. You know them. Uh, before you say one or two, they are already sending emoji. Some of them even send the emoji that is doing like this to show that they are happy with you. But you know sometimes that these guys are actually not for me. Can I tell you that in 2024, you don't need them around you. Cut off from them. Stop managing their friendship. And if you cannot, God will separate them from you. In the name of Jesus, anyone that will not allow you to move forward again the lord will stop them he will bring a wall of division between you and them in the name of jesus some of you there are your employees you must sack them yes they will get another job some of you you are working with bosses that you know are sitting on your promotion sack them you can sack your boss I will teach you that but not tonight because I want to fulfill my promise precious father we thank you take all the glory and the praise in the name of Jesus tonight we have had your word the word of wisdom Lord, let this word help us to prepare for the great year ahead of us in the name of Jesus. There are many people that come to church. They are just hearers of the word. They are not doers. That's why their life never changes. The word keeps coming. But they never carry out the word. Help us to be doers of this word. That our life might not remain the same. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Celebrate Jesus. I have two minutes. And I will just use that two minutes to tell you a story of something that happened today. You know, I went to work today. <laughs> so
something happened sometimes ago in the middle of the year earlier in the year a died inside an elevator somewhere i hope that you have that. now the person the organization that fixed that installed that equipment that that young lady died in i went to check the equipment somewhere at banana highland today and i discovered the same cause of that accident exists in the building in luxurious house so i shut it down in fact when the owner discovered it's a over you know rich people don't like to die it was a serious issue that this woman said engineer oyama soro i'm videoing you now you know that woman said something she said if this thing actually happened in one of the side of this same guy he should have gone around all his equipment check and forestall and ensure this kind of a thing never happens again he said that man can never learn he said i'm going to make sure i jail him you know rich people when they say it they mean it she's a young lady i'm sure she will be in the age range of my wife but she said princess are you not young see me am i not young hallelujah all right now the reason why i said that story is this there are some things that have actually happened in your life they are meant to teach you some lessons they are meant to help you to take steps to guide against other things like that happening please go back home sit and learn from your life even before you begin to learn from the life of others do you hear me learn from your own life your mistakes your errors your misdeeds rise up to your feet put your hands together for jesus let's invite pastor Wumi to come and handle the questions because my own time is hope now praise god somebody say young lady am i not young <laughs> i'm young <laughs> praise god all right do we have questions okay please help us pass the mic uh brahmana please help us okay so already there's a mic in front please if you have a question shall we all be seated please let's be seated all right while we are thinking through our questions let's pray for the man of god that god has used for us that the lord will strengthen him that the grace of god will be multiplied in his life more strength more grace more unction to function in the mighty name of jesus that the lord almighty will continue to strengthen him and fight his battle for him in the mighty name of jesus thank you father as you have decreed so shall it be in the name of god the father in the name of god the son in the name of god the holy spirit in jesus mighty name we are prayed amen praise god all right questions 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 somebody is uh, a lot of people are raising up their hand oh, praise god praise the lord hallelujah Listen, i want to know the difference between dream and imagination just see something again how you can get that thing is it the same thing as a dream difference between dreams and imagination all right we want us to contribute bro mike different between dreams and imagination <laughs> are you sure you don't know or you don't just want to talk praise the lord 
Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, I... Okay, you asked a question of the uh, difference between dream and imagination. I think I, w- I just want us to. Uh, I would. I would suggest that we go to the scripture, even as we look at the the, the story of Joseph. The Bible says he dreamt a dream. So, if you look at that scripture, that is an example of dream. God gave Joseph a dream that is going to be above his brothers. So, that is an example of a dream. So, imagination. Uh, imagination, I just, I just want you to, to look at that woman. The woman with the issue of blood. I want to say that is an imagination. He, he, she was able to imagine that if I can touch the hem of his garment, I think I will be made whole. He, she first of all imagined the thoughts. So you now she now brought it out, and then so that is that is just the difference between the two. The first one is let he now God gave him he gave him a dream. The second one. The woman imagine within herself if she can touch the hem of the garment and then so that's just what i have to say thank you praise god do we have anyone that wants to contribute okay um i think sister jai wants to contribute okay all right we'll re- let's return please give pastor one mic so that he will run everything off for us even as others are asking questions all right i will just say this before pastor talk um even dreams when you talk about dreams dreams can be divided into two dreams can as well uh be called a plan that you have for yourself a plan something you are you are dreaming of planning to become planning to do not necessarily that you slept and saw it while sleeping Mm -mm. like a plan you know if you ask somebody what do you want to become in future i want to become a doctor it's a dream he's not yet a doctor he's dreaming to become a doctor so it now depends on how you work hard to achieve that and dream can as well come as probably as a result of what you have gone through during the day or what god wants to show to you while you are sleeping so dream can either be gotten while sleeping or something you got while planning ahead planning for what you will become and um, when you talk of imagination just as i said it imagination is you just beginning to see think of something and imagine that thing happening and imagination if properly managed either good or bad they come to pass either good or bad when you imagine it and you begin to to work on it and your mind begin to process it it come to pass if it is not uh, immediately killed if it is a bad imagination do you understand and that's why the bible says breaking down every evil imagination so there are imaginations that can come to pass if you do not work on it on time if they are bad and if it is good imagination too you imagine that by tomorrow I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about it that by tomorrow somebody will just call and give me five million. I need that farm. And you begin to imagine it. And your thought is going towards those businesses you've done in the past or those um, proposals you've written in the past. If you can follow it up truly through the help of God, it can come to pass. But dream and imagination, uh, I think they are not really the same. They are not really the same. So you can see that and imagine. You can sleep and dream. You can sit down and plan uh, for your future. We can also be categorized to be a dream. I want our pastor to say something on that. To throw more light. Dreams. There are dreams that you receive from God. They are like revelations. God used them to tell you some things about your future dreams. There are dreams that it takes you to dream those dreams for them to come to pass about your life. Until you become a deep dreamer, you cannot attain some heights in life. 
So dream is such that you create the picture of a future that you want to feature in. Those are dreams. But imagination, sometimes there are bad imagination. Jesus said that the moment you begin to imagine yourself having intimacy with a lady in your heart, you have already committed that sin of adultery or fornication, depending on who you are. Do you understand? It's an imagination. You are not dreaming it. You are imagining it taking place. There is a thin line between imagination and dreams. All right, and there are, for example, that's what we call dreaming. Daydreaming is when you are seeing yourself, you know, achieving some things that naturally you know you cannot achieve. And I'm telling you, it's better you daydream and back it up with hard work and faith than not daydreaming at all. There's no sin in daydreaming. Just make sure they are positive. Do you understand? So, like I said, there's a thin wall between dream or dreaming and imagining. And um, can I just tell you that most of the devices that we use today, they start from the point of what? Imagination. The AC that is standing here. The mic that we are holding in our hands. The chairs you are sitting on. Everything starts from the point of imagination. Now, a dream, you may not be able to draw a dream as a physical picture because a dream might be something that, you know, uh, that appears in scenes. In scenes. But imagination appears on a scene. You can imagine a, a thing taking place. But dreams, there are different scenes about it. Do you understand now? But the truth is, a dream is made up of collection of different, what? Imagination or revelation that God gives to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Second person, please. Where are the Michael? Thank you. Praise God. Okay, so the, my question is just a thought in my head. So the dream that Joseph had in the scripture, the Bible recorded that it was God that gave him the dream. So um, I was trying to imagine my my head, if there's any other person in the scripture that just had a dream on their own. And, um, you know, so it's just like Sorry, I'm just trying to ask a question. Is it right for a believer to just sit down and just dream? Just like that. Or he should wait for when God gives him a dream, just like Joseph. So that's the first question. The second question Sorry, is... Sorry, that first one was not clear. Okay, so my understanding of scripture, based on what I read, is that God gave Joseph the dream. Okay. Joseph was not the one that brought the dream out from anywhere. Okay. But so just having his normal sleep and snoring, and God showed him the first time, second time, and third time. God kept showing him. So, I didn't see an example of anywhere in the Bible where a believer maybe just dreamt that, oh, okay, like, like Martin Luther said, I have a dream. I have a dream that this, 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 this will happen. So, the first question I'm asking is, is it right for a believer to just come up with dream on their own that I have a dream that I will do this, I will do that? Okay. So, that's the first question. Second question is about goals. Um, is it possible that you set a goal for a year? And at the end, you do not even achieve even one of the goals. Wow. So, if it's yes, what are the reasons why goals are not being fulfilled, uh, as in achieved deeply? All right. Maybe something has happened. Instead of what you planned, maybe God just did something bigger than, or even beyond what you even plan self. There is big imagination. We Sorry, answer. that mic is breaking. Now, do who notice it? It's breaking. We can't hear him well. Sorry, bro, might take this one. Or you collect that one. Uh -uh. And you are sitting beside him. <laughs> okay, praise God. Thank you, sir. Uh. So the first question is understood, right, Mark? Second question is about um, you setting a goal for the year. And at the end, not, none not, of it was achieved. None of it was achieved. 
he said what is achieved is different from what you said okay and those that achieve look even beyond what you even said and even like um um perpendicular they are parallel like they are parallel they don't even look similar in any way so is it possible that you set a goal for the year and at the end it's not even achieved at all and it's something else that just act, achieve then the other, the other flip side to it also is that is it possible that you live your life without setting goals and god you just trust god like part time that god oh, this year i've set goals in the past and it, it doesn't happen the way i set it so this year i'm just releasing myself into your hand and anything that happens i'm just flowing with you so that's the question i just want us to throw more light on that please follow some children went out now follow please check them all right the first one is god gave a dream to joseph that he didn't read in the bible where god gave other people dream like that all right now is it possible is it possible for a believer to dream without god giving them dream right and that's the first question is it possible for a believer to dream without god giving them dream all right then the second question is it possible for you to set a goal in a year and you don't even achieve one out of it meanwhile god did something or you achieve something better than the one you said right you achieve something better greater than the one you have set for yourself what could have been the reason why you didn't achieve those ones you set for yourself and probably why the bigger ones happen are those the two questions then the third one what's the third one and things begin to happen and when you trust god does it happen or you just leave no i'm just asking is it that things happen or things don't happen even when you trust god technical help us now it's not only two mic we have in this church now help so us. what i'm trying to say is that is it right for a believer to, to just live his life like one step at a time with jesus trusting him for every step instead of just setting the goal that he or she knows that at the end god, he might, the god, person god, might not achieve it god has his own plan plans are proposed for my life so is it all right is, I, it right, I will, is it right for a believer to live that way is it right for a believer to live just like that anyway um do we have anybody that want to say something about that sorry ca can i come down i look far away from people i'm not connecting all right do we have anybody that want to say something about that it's a bible study and uh, we are giving opportunity to ask as many questions as possible ah see the way somebody just yawn now wow all right is it possible uh for a believer to live um let me start from number two if you set majority of people set a goal and they don't achieve it because that goal is not smart it's not smart you know i was having a meeting with my staff before we close for the year and those are the things we were actually discussing and i was telling them that sometimes we set goals that are unachievable we don't even some are not realistic we just put it there then you set a goal that you know that this thing is not something i can achieve in six months and you time yourself that you want to achieve it in two weeks and you are not even working towards it because you believe that god will do a miracle for example i want a very good job in an oil company and i'm not i don't have a cv i didn't set out my cv i was just trusting god and praying in my house I, I might not even study anything related to that job I'm expecting. And I'm just expecting that it will happen. It's different from when, I'm, when I start the person and say, Oh, I didn't study that, but I'm beginning to study now for whatever they might give me there, whatever I've applied for. You know, those are two different things. So, majority of these goals are not being achieved because we don't work towards achieving it. We just trust God. Our pastor said we should come with a list. And now, these are my list so it depends on god to do it you know um we all know what smart means now uh -huh. what is s uh? what is m a r realistic and that is the most important thing among that word 
until it's time banned. So in most cases, we said some things that they are not smart. And two, we set goals sometimes we don't work on it. We don't work on achieving it. We don't work on it. We don't, we don't do anything about it. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is that I've, I've tried it, these two, and it worked. There are years I set goals that only one or two out of it was achieved. And there are years I set goals that everything, I was able to, everything, everything was achieved. Praise God. Hey, you see? Why you need to be born again? Sorry. All right, please, let's take care of him, please. So, it, sometimes you don't walk towards it. We just set it and we leave it. We just set it and we believe God will work it out. You know, and you drop it there. And, um, and another thing is, some of us set goals that probably we have not gotten to the level of what we set or what we are expecting. And there is no way you can walk on that line because that is not what you need for now. So, a lot of things can be, you know, when Pastor was teaching for the past two, three weeks now, he said we should sit down and see reasons why we cannot achieve some things. Some of us want to do away with some attitude, but you are still moving with friends that will make you to commit those or continue in that line. Uh, you, you, for example, you are a student, probably you know, usually cheat in your exam. And you know that ordinarily you can't carry this out without the help of some of your friends. And you are not ready to leave those friends. You understand? So if you are not ready to leave those friends, you will still continue to do it. So sometimes we are the reason why we don't achieve those goals. Not because God do not want to bring them to pass. That is my own side of it. Pastor will still throw more light. And when you talk of, um, is it possible or is it good for Christians to dream without God giving us dream? Is there any dream that God, is not God that gave it? There are dreams from the devil. Is it the dream you sleep and dream you are talking about? Or dreams about life as in planning what you want to achieve? It's, it's, it's possible for you to, to have a plan for yourself of what I want to achieve. But I want to believe that if you call somebody a child of God, it's not possible for a child of God to want to achieve something that is not God, that has helped him or her, or put it in his or her mind to achieve it. I don't want to believe, except to say, is it possible for somebody or for a man? But when you say the child of God, I want to believe before somebody can be qualified to be a child of God, you must have a relationship with God. So your dream should be tailored, or your dream should be carried out through the help of the Holy Spirit. Or your dream, or you should dream through the help of the Holy Spirit. I don't know whether we get what I'm trying to say. I should be able to, I don't know if it's possible for me to say something outside God. If I am a truly a child of God. So whatever I'm saying, whatever I want to achieve, even when people don't believe me, it is still God. Nobody agreed with Daniel when he said they don't want to eat from the king's meat. Because I decided to do more study on uh, the book of Daniel. And I was asking the question, what is that king's meat? It's not all 100% of what they are giving them that is bad now. It's just that he felt that eating those things will make look like them. And he said, okay, give us this. No, are we not saying because he, he just want to be fed on beans and, um, and vegetables, then because of that, it's not God. So for me, if you are saying a child of God, whatever you dream about as a child of God must have come from God. Notwithstanding, if you are expecting the one you will sleep and receive, that one I can't say. But that I want to dream as a child of God, my dream must be aligned with God's mind and purpose for my life. It mustn't be out of it. But as a man, ordinarily a man, if it is something good, if it is something good, well, I want to leave that in the hands of God because I read about a man that has an orphanage or that visited an orphanage where he supplied, I think he supplied them wheelchair. I don't know how many of us read that story on social media. And they said, um, one of the, I think one of the boys heard the man and tried to look straight into the man or something. I said, I want to be able to identify you when I get to heaven so that I will thank you again for what you have done. And the first story, when I read that story, 
I think from that story, if I'm not mistaken, the man is not a Christian. But that thing touched the heart of the man. So he said, so there is heaven. The child told him, I want to look at your face so that when I see you in heaven, I'll be able to thank you again. So there are things you can do even as an unbeliever that God can use it to draw you close to himself. So that one depends on God, but uh, Pastor will help us. I think uh, it remains one. Pastor will solve the three puzzles. Praise God. Praise God. Number one. Which one is number one? Is it possible for a Christian to... Is it possible for a child of God to dream? Not you you, you are God. not permitted to dream outside God's dream for your life. Romans. So we're asking me to our second scripture. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. The proof that you are a child of God. The proof that you are a child of God is that you are led by the Spirit of God. That's the only proof that you are a child of God. Anything you do outside the meeting of God. <laughs> it could, because we are not motivational speakers here. No, we are not trying to motivate you here. We are only trying to tell you the truth. There is nobody that God called that he did not give a vision. You can call the vision your dream. Praise God. And if you have personal dreams that are not scriptural based, look at what the Bible says about it. It was in vanity. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter five or seven ecclesiastes chapter five or seven the bible says for in the multitude of dreams and money many words there are diverse vanity he said but fear thou the lord so how many of you are old enough to remember vision 2020 there was one before it it's called vision 2000 aha uh -huh. Do you, do, you, do you remember? Some of you were younger then. So, many of those things were received as released by God. And let me tell you, there are nations that have visions and have gone far. Not even because they are born again. No. Dubai, they, they, they are not born again. They are chronic Muslims. They set goals for themselves. And they are able to achieve it. And many of us, me, I've been to Dubai, I think, twice. You go and spend your money in their hotels. She's been there. And all the rest like that. Are you with me? The truth is, in life, you understand what God has called you out to do. And let me tell you this. The problem with many of us that are hyper-spiritual is that we think until God come to knock at your door say so i am here Moe, start seeing this some there are decisions you take romans that i read simply that you took that decision is as a result of you being led you may be unconscious of it but yet it is the spirit of god that has that guided you into it and that's how the spirit works the fact that you are a child of God, the steps you take are believed to be steps ordered by God. Do you remember that scripture? That your steps will be ordered by God. Do you understand? The moment you begin to have second thought or doubt over something you are about to do, a step you are about to take, somewhere you are about to go, you know that God is calling your consciousness to the fact that I am not in this. You get it? I am not in this. Maybe you are in a relationship and you are planning marriage and suddenly you just said something is wrong. It's not something that is wrong. It's God that is telling you, don't go further with this. That is what it means to be led by the Spirit of God. You know, sometimes we do something and say, ah, something just told me that that thing will happen. It's not something, bro. 
don't call the Holy Spirit something. It is actually the Spirit of God. Is somebody with me? Do, did I answer that first question? My goals, my dreams, be inspired by the Spirit of God. Number two. Number two. What? That set go. People, first of all, people that set goals and did not achieve any of their goal. God intentionally disallowed them if they are Christians so that they will not achieve those goals. Something else that is better than the goals. Now, eh, God is telling you that you said goals be lower than whom God has called what God has called you to achieve. Because many of you see the mistake we make. Let me tell you one of the mistakes we make. We use our human mind think of the things of God and the things of our life until we subject our life to the leading of God and his word there are times when you set goals you must verify it by the scriptures every goal you set in life check it by the scripture I want to study medicine in the university is that what God has asked you to study let me shock you. One of my, the daughter of my sister is my niece. We were on Christmas there, I was with most, so many of my nieces. And so one of them, when she finished secondary school, she said she wanted to study medicine. Eventually, there's this other one they give them instead of medicine, physiotherapy. All right? So that was what she was given. So I was now saying that, ah, when you finish your girl, you have to still go. He said that's what most of their lecturers did. But they are now telling them that it is all waste of time. That it does not, well, let's my young people, it does not, um, it's like it doesn't change anything. And I told her, you have to do your master's. I said, if I will do master's, I will go and do master's in nursing, not even medicine. I will not go back because mostly you finish that four years then you go and start your medicine in third year then you finish it in another four years so instead of seven years you will have studied for eight years so she said no she'll just go and do masters in nursing listen to me she set that goal for herself somehow somehow it did not work she called like many of you say they gave me political science to study it is you that collect it if they give you that you did not collect mass comp, you will not be a mass comp graduate today. Praise God. So, you set some goals. You may not achieve them. I have set goals, not annually, but I have set some goals for my life that I, was not, I wasn't able to achieve. Some of them, I am just beginning to step into them, probably because now is the time. So don't kill yourself trying to achieve goals. That's what me, I will just bring out from that. That is not working out. Does not mean it will not work in its God-given time. There is a time God has set for it. Just make sure that every goal you set is inspired by two things. By God, if you have, the, if you have, you have learned to hear him. Or, number two, is something that you know will add value to the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, as long as it is God that is leading you, or it will add value, or bring about impact to the kingdom of God, God will make sure that all things work together for those that are called according to his what? His purpose. You see how it ends? His purpose. So that thing you are trying to do, that apartment you want to get, that husband you want to marry, is it according to God's purpose? Number three, the last one. Eh? I answered them together. That you don't set goals at all. You are on your own. You are on your what? You are, you are on your own. Even Jesus set goals. Do you know Jesus had a goal? What was the goal of Jesus? 
to die was he just planning to die and be buried he was planning to not to win more souls redeem us uh -huh. to die to die to die uh -huh. he had a goal that he must come he must be killed and then when he is buried he had a mission even for being for dying you know if not he would have done like elijah or enoch but he had to go to hell. There was a mission. There was a goal, a purpose. And he had to fulfill it. There was nothing Jesus did in the world that had no purpose. It's dangerous for you not to set goals. Oga, okay? set goals. But make sure the goals you set are inside. Not just smart. Too. That smart is a, a world standard and set up make sure that as much as that is important make sure your goals are embedded in god's purpose for your life do you understand you are setting a goal that you at the end of your hundred level you must have distinction 5.1 hallelujah so that is a goal does god be happy with you for that god will be happy because jesus was not a failure so how would you fail hallelujah <laughs> i want to break the ceiling that's why amen D do you understand there's nothing wrong in setting goals there's nothing wrong however let your goals be embedded in god goals for your life and that brings me to something you must first of all have understanding of God's plans for your life. I know the plans I have for you. So God, what is the plan you have for me next year? The, the problem many of us have is that we try to crack our brain to develop the kind of dream or goal you are setting are the ones we develop with our brain. Our brain is too small to understand the plans of God for our life. Like, like the choir just come up and they just sing any song. Is this the song that God wants us to sing for crossover service? Because we hear it sweet, we let touch a life, save a life, heal a soul. That is burdened with problem. Do you get it now? The day you get it right. By knowing God's plan and purpose for your life. You'll be doing something so. People will even be jealous of you. Because they will be discovering that you are achieving. Do you get it man? You are achieving it effortlessly. They don't know that what you are simply doing is this. You are only walking in the plan of God. You are walking, it's just walking in the plan of God. That was why it was easy for Jesus. The moment he said, Thy will be done, not my will. Yes, they beat him. They did terrible things to him before they hung him on the cross. But yes, he was doing it effortlessly. Why? He was actually walking in the plan of God. The reason why many people set goals that are not in the plan of God is because they are setting what I call competitive goals. Because that church have done it, our church must do it. Because my friend got married this year, I must marry this year. Do, do you understand? Don't set competitive goal. Because my friend went to, you know, buy a house at Magodo. If I have to steal so that I buy a house in Magodo you see those goals that's what has led to Yahoo that's what has led to frauds I pray that the spirit of God will keep open our eyes I hope I answered the question celebrate pastor Ubi. praise God 
Alright, number three. In the third person. Three people raise their hands. Are you scared? Praise God. Give it to Sister Abundance. If you are the one, what will you do? Let her talk first. If you are the one, what will you do? Say something. Sorry, I clarify. The question is I'm staying. This one is well increased. Take this one, the blue speaker. We live together in the same room. Okay, we are just neighbors. <laughs> I tell you, and she's always angry. Have you ever asked her? likes you to listen when she talks okay so at first we used to have clash this one we live in the same house so your, your case is simple <laughs> so, so you come and meet me i'm, t- me, I'm not interested I'm, I'm this type of person that if, if you are telling me your problem i think you need a solution think of a solution i will give it to you but then i discovered that she doesn't want any solution she just wants to talk and wants you to listen so <laughs> to learn to develop how to just listen and when she just finish i'll say okay it is well god will help you i have the solution for your problem but because i understand that your problem is that you don't like to hear so you will meet the problem and you will when you meet the problem you will come back and say sorry it is well so i feel for you since you are not staying in the same house it's not a big deal when she comes hi and then on your way quickly running away ah i'm quickly going somewhere so I, I think you should, for, for me, I don't do much friends, so I think it's easy. But for a young person, I would say you can learn to just maybe, like Pastor C, you can just keep a distance. About herself, she will understand that you don't want to be afraid. You have done it before now. If the person is just, I'm, I'm running late for church, I'm going to for something. And if you can endure to listen without giving advice. And even when you want to give advice, you first allow to finish this is what I think. Or you ask question, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't even need to say, do you want advice? Say, this is what me, I think about the situation. I feel this is not, this is like a scam. And I feel, if I'm the one, I will do this. I, I think it's a very simple thing. Separate. Okay, sorry. I was thinking of scriptures. Uh, the first scripture is Hebrews 12, 14. It says, Follow peace with all men, and with only knowledge, I mean, no one can see God. So my interpretation is that if following peace would mean that I would mind my business, I want to be mind my business. You know, when you first now, she am the one that tries to help you, and you always get too offended. <laughs> so, if the peace that will happen is that I should leave you on your own, I'm going to 
live here your own but I'll be praying for you that God should open your eyes. Right? That's the first scripture. Yeah. That scripture is um very much scripture. So it should not be a time that is a busybody in other people's affairs. That you should mind your own business. You should yeah, to yeah, live yeah. a quiet, a quiet life. If the person is not showing yourself to be friendly, you don't stay your own now. It's not by force. That's my own advice actually. Oh, right, if it helps. Yeah, if you are the kind of person, you always go in close to me. Like maybe you are the one who goes in close to me. So I don't want to have anything to do. So always stay on your own. Then allow her to come. You don't know what to do. But whenever you're anytime, you maybe just want to know what is her problem. So I do that. I, I, I have another. Uh, to that because she says something that the lady always feel that she too much that she knows too much when she's talking so i think i think the the problem of that person is self-esteem and that low self-esteem has made her to be the low self-esteem have made that lady to be a victim so that will make her to be on the defensive mode at all time. She'll be ready to defend and talk and talk. And I think the, the first thing to do is to try to understand the kind of person she is. Um, if you are not taken, that person can hurt you. Because she will feel that you are trying to make just of her because she doesn't know as much as you do. So if you are to be married, those are the kind of friends that you don't drop you run away from them you flee but even in fleeing you mustn't let them know you want to flee yes because if you do it you just break bam they will hurt you in fact if they are on campus with you they are dangerous they are kind of ladies that will sell rapists to you cutties to you that's just the truth so I'm saying this because you're already in school so that you can know how to deal with them when you have them. The first thing to do is to manage, learn how to manage her. Number one, she brings things to you. I want to do, is it MM1 or I do at what you call them? Say, eh, eh, ah, you want to do it? Oh, and that's nice. Oh. Do you have money? Oh, I have money. I have 50,000. Eh, ah, and that's good. Oh, maybe you should do like 30,000. I think it's a good idea. But don't use everything. Just do 30,000. If you say that, that means you are still nice. But if you really want to cut out, say, hey, ah, do it now. It's nice. Go ahead. Because that kind of person wants you to rob his or her ego. They just want to feel on top. They want to feel important. So by the time you are talking them down, you are confirming their fear. And the fear is she knows too much. So if somebody is saying you are somebody that knows too much, then you leave the person now. You understand? But such people manage them first. If they can change, you will see it in the atti in the attitude when you are managing them. But if they cannot change, gradually you 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 just cut yourself off gradually. If it is on campus, you don't just stop. Or if you just stop, they will deal with you. They will treat your fuck off, and they won't know you are running away from your own life or your emotion. So please try to manage before you. But if you are married, ah. Uh, those kind of friends, when they're at your gate, like my estate gate, and the security say call. In fact, they are called, say, you no go pick up. Because if you no pick up, security no go allow them in. Do you understand? So, you cut, you move away from them. But it's better you stay away from such people, if possible. It's better. There are so many people you try to influence them. They are not just ready, you know. Don't worry, as you grow, you see more. Then you learn more. You say, she learned to listen. It's because she can't just cut off like that. So she learned to listen and end it with what? It is well, oh. Ah, God will help us. It is well, oh. I don't even know it is well. It's becoming too much of me. Now somebody talked to me on Sunday and after talking to her, maybe he knows I will not rest. So he say, eh, well, it is well, Sha. I know that's the way you will end it. it is, I say, ah. I say, it is well now. Not because I don't have... Somebody cannot come to me and tell me I don't have what to say. But because I don't want to say anything. Because my words... So it is well. And the person ended it and said, eh, my so no ni it is well. I say, ah, it is well. Oh my well, no ni. I say, well, all right. 
God will help us. Okay, I've learned that one now. My own is, ah, Eti were all right. Eti were all right. It is well. Eti were all right. So now I'm learning another one from Sister Abundance. God will help us. Do you understand? Just, just be wise. People like that are dangerous. Especially when you say you are trying to show that you know. That statement is big. If you hear it even from me, your pastor's wife, be careful. It's big. And that statement usually comes out of jealousy. And jealousy is a dangerous in fact, it kills faster than gone. So one needs to be careful in dealing with such a person. Be wise. When he, he might come to you tonight or tomorrow, since he lives in your area, and give you, say, ah, that's good, oh, that's fine. Hey, I'm coming. And my mommy says, ah, we'll finish the gist, I'm coming. But you smile. Ah, that's, ah, you want to do, okay, you want to travel for Christ? It's fantastic, please. Ah, I love that idea. But I'm coming, I'm coming. My mommy says, run. Just act and run. But you mustn't just break up like that. Bam, you understand? God will help us. Praise God. Sister Oye may want to say something. It's last Bible study for the year. You want to say something? You have a question? Praise God. Miracle, run for your dear life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mommy, I want to ask this question. What, um, for instance, maybe as a child of God, according to the will of God, you set your own goals and along the line you actually achieve that goal, but you lose it. What would be the cost? You set a goal, you achieve the goal, along the line you lose the goal. What could be the cost? What is the cost? Pastor, sir. Three, three possible costs why you could have lost what you achieved. Number one, carelessness. Number one is what? You could have been careless with it. Number two is the powers or the forces of darkness. The powers or forces of darkness. Number three, and the ultimate, God can take it away from you. God, God can take it away. If it's becoming a source of pride to your life, if it's beginning to make you feel that you're obtaining by your power, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar had the throne, but God took away the throne from him. For how many years? Seven years. By the time he came back, what was the first thing that came out of his mouth? He said, ah! There is this God, though. And it's not that he even came